bad, just better than having some heart. Okay, look now, look now, look how they running. They beating white people down just to show us what's coming. Or to show us we nothing. Or to show us we only welcome when singing or balling. You shut up and dribble. Fire. Uh, I brought love. Hey everybody, I'm Carrie Champion. Welcome to We The People. So today we are having a very candid conversation with athletes and artists who want to make sure that you use your voice to vote. Voting is your voice. So we have so many different issues that have happened in this country. It's really truly unprecedented time. So I'm looking forward to these conversations. I think you'll be educated as well as entertained, but most importantly informed. We have morethanavote.org, whenweallvote.org, and fairfight.com. Those resources are imperative as we try to change our future. Yeah, la la. There's no way that we can talk about hip hop or even the fact that we wanna talk about activism, black voter suppression without bringing in this guy straight from Port Arthur, Texas. We are talking about Bum B. He is an activist, a scholar, and an all around gentleman. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Bun, I don't wanna start heavy, but I guess I have to because that's where we are in the world today. It's heavy as hell. And when you think about what needs to happen in this country in terms of change, what's the first thing that you think of? Um, Equality. That's pretty much the first thing that, that comes to mind, right? Black people, need to be seen as equals in this world. You know, we had to fight just to be recognized as a full citizen in this country and not um, three fifths. The world is now seeing what we've known for so long in the culture and in the community. Um, the one way that we can fight is obviously voting. Talk to me about what voting means to you. I hear people all the time talking about one vote doesn't matter and that voting doesn't make a difference. If that's true, why do they work so hard to suppress the black vote? Because they understand the power of the vote. And so it's time that black people collectively also understand the power of their vote. And not just on a national level, because a lot of times we only have this conversation every four years. People need to be very much involved in their local politics. They need to understand who their elected officials are, where they stand on issues that affect you. And you need to use your vote to either support the ones that um, care about you and your condition or to elect people who do. A newer initiative that we're dealing with is um, educating felons, right? So in the state of Texas, um, if you're a felon, right, if, if you've been to, to jail or to prison, and but you're no longer on probation or parole, you have the right to register to vote. Um, another thing um, that was just brought to my attention, there's an initiative called you know, Orange, which is happening not just in Houston, but all over the country. If you're in jail currently um, during pretrial, but you have not been um, convicted, like you, you, you're still in jail waiting to, to for your day in court, you are still eligible to vote. And you said something so key. They work so hard to hope that we stay uninformed, but more importantly, to suppress the black vote. If you could do one thing with this message that we're trying to send today about how important voting is, what type of images would you like our people to understand and see when they go to these polls and vote or when they cast their ballots? I think the images that we've all seen, you know what I'm saying, for decades in this country, if not centuries in this country, we've seen black people oppressed, we've seen black people attacked. So every time you look back and you see those old black and white images of people of color being attacked by dogs and people of color being sprayed with hoses, that's what they were fighting for. Back then they were just fighting for a chance to vote. People like Martin Luther King Jr., people like Malcolm X, um, these people died to help us um, be in a position to have the power that we have now, which is to be able to cast a vote and make a decision about the people that have controls over our lives. So, I mean, if, if you if you in your own community need a reason mm -hmm. to vote, look at a person like George Floyd. If the people in your city are not open to police reform, are not open to having the conversation about defunding the police, are not open to issues concerning economic equality, judicial equality, and racial equality, right? If they're scared to say Black Lives Matter, you have the power to put people in those positions who do believe that Black Lives Matter, who do believe in racial equality, economic equality, judicial equality, That's right? right? That's right. Who see us as human beings. And if the people in your in your community don't feel that way, vote them out. It's that simple. It's just vote them out. We, we don't have enough time to sit around and hope that people change their minds. Yeah, Bumby, you point out something so important. We have the power. And that is in our vote and that is with our voice and that's how we use our voice. I, I think of where we are right now, people say this is a particular moment, but it is a movement, not just a moment, it is a movement. Uh, why, in your opinion, was it 
George Floyd's death? Why was that the chosen um, brutality for people to say, oh my God, black people are still oppressed in this country and it is not fair? I think it's twofold, Carrie, and so many different encounters with, between people of color and the police, there simply is no proof of what happened in the interaction. Mm. And so what happens is in a court of law, um, it tends to lean toward the policeman's point of view, right? In this case, we saw very clearly what happened. I think the other thing is, is due to the fact that everyone was at home, basically, um, during this time period in relation to the coronavirus, you couldn't avoid it, right? It was on every television station, it was on every social media platform, Everywhere you turn, you were constantly hit upside the head with this message. You see in the interaction that this man did nothing to deserve what, what happened. That's right. And I think uh, so well said, because if you think about it, in the, gra the grand scheme of things, it wasn't worth it. And he didn't have to lose his life. I think that we brought on, you touched on something that a lot of people talk about. Um, and that is now defunding the police. That has been such a huge conversation, but there's so many misconceptions around defunding and dismantling. Uh, if you will, educate the audience. All right, so most people, when they hear the term defund the police, they tend to think of, oh, they're gonna take away our police department. Nothing could be further from, from the point. Defunding the police means that in certain communities, even Houston, take for example, we had over a billion dollars allocated to our police force. Now, what is that money being used for? Some of that money tends to be allocated towards riot shields, right? Pepper spray, right? That kind of thing. That's only used against the people that fund this, this budget, right? So why would the people want to supply the police with the means to oppress them? If the police are concerned about the situations in certain communities um, with a higher crime rate, well, higher crime rates tend to happen in communities where there's not, um, there's, there's not uh, employment opportunities, right? There's not a lot of social services and people are going to do what they need to do to take care of themselves sure. and their families. When the community has more opportunities for employment, more opportunities for upward mobility, then they tend to be a less of a strain on the government. They tend to have a lower crime rate. And because of that, we'll have less need for the police in those communities. You um, are passionate about so many different things in terms of making sure that we are holding our leaders accountable. Talk to me about some of the other projects that you're working on. Well, right now, obviously being a part of more than a vote is essential. Um, we're dealing with primaries in this country right now. And we just wanna educate people. We wanna inform people because people are tired, they're angry, they're concerned and they want information and they want action. And so we wanna make sure that we give them the right information and lead them in the right direction. And we thank the people that do not look like us for standing with us right now, because it's very Amen. important that people that people who aren't black be involved because if black people could have gotten rid of racism, we would have done it hundreds of years ago. And so I'm trying to use my voice and my platform just to let people know that if they feel like I do, there's a number of places they can go to enact change in their community. People need to know about how their city council runs. They need to know that they have the ability to speak when city council meets, to let them know that that's not the way that they feel their city needs to be run. Those are not the places that they feel the money and, of their and, community but, needs to be allocated. And Bubby, even a step further, they can run for office in their local community. They can run for positions. Like people act like they leave it up to somebody else. If you're upset, I, it's not hard to get on the school board. It's not hard to be a part of the city council. It really isn't. And depending on how small your town is, you could be a mayor. It's the power is with the people. And we need to just know that that's happening. Absolutely. And it's always been with the people. You know, if you look at Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, right? She felt that there was a system of racism and a system of oppression that led to her son's death. And so what did she do? She ran for city council and she was elected yeah. city council. Our own former president, 44, Barack Obama, right? Started in the community as an activist, ran for an elected position, became senator, ran for another elected position and became president of the mm -hmm. United States. So don't think mm -hmm. that you can't make a difference. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a lot of money. You don't need a lot of power. Your voice is enough to make a difference. Amen. I feel like I need to go out and run for something. You gave me a rousing speech there, sir. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. Um, when I when I talk to um, my brothers, I have to ask you, as a black man, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. I have a very strong relationship with God, so prayer definitely works for me. I have children and grandchildren who are watching me, who are encouraged by what I do, and they're proud of me right now, you know? And that's really what matters, you know? The change starts at home. Mm -hmm. You know, so as long as you have a support system that believes in what you're doing and supports you in what you're doing, 
you have everything you need to go out there and fight the good fight. And for those that don't, there's a community of people here to help you. So you can go to places like morethanavote.org. There are many different places that will encourage you, inform you, and they will put you with groups of people that feel like you, that are ready to take action. So no one has to go about this alone if they want to do it. Yeah, we're stronger together. People have been saying it, but that has much more meaning now that we are in our movement, not just this moment. Bumby, it has been an education, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep up the good fight. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame.